Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizun's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan, Hee-chan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Well, you're, you're beating me! You're kicking my butt! Of course I'm gonna slow down and take a look at all the possible moves so I can beat you. If I take too long, that's my prerogative. There ain't no time limit, is there? Shi Chen also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the Student Council. I knew it! I knew it! Bargaining! I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. Shi Chen admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the Student Council. <laughs> they are they are two super villains. This is it. They are, they are the villains of Karawa Shoujo right here. That you just don't know it yet. You're so competitive, Shizun. You're gonna turn ugly like by act two or three or something. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the Stone Council present to be a little more magnanimous. Ooh, that's a word I have not seen in a while. Very good word usage. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizun, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into memory. Think! 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 <laughs> Suddenly, Shizun bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Uh, wait, wait please slow down, Shichan. Uh, Shichan. Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. <laughs> Those eyes of her shine with childlike mischief. Oh my gosh, she's got the little cat face going on there. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Uh, it's risk, right? You gotta play being risky. Take risks, so... Attack aggressively. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I could recoup the advantage. She's one seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. She soon adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. I win! I win! Yay! You don't have to translate that. I kind of get that, Misha. Thank you. <laughs> and Misa even says it. There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. <laughs> don't look so sad, Hee-chan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Wow, she's like totally admitting her fault, her flaws there. I'm glad she is totally accepting of herself. Hee Chan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Shi Chan is impressed. The mark of a great people is that they are daring and they, that they can follow through. You've already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hee Chan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step. And there's no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. You're right, Shi Chan, but that's so demanding. Wait, who's talking here? Shi Chan leans. Ooh, whoa. Shi Chan leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful. More like a serious person I expected her to be from the start. Shi Chan, would you like to join the Stone Council? Here it is. She really doesn't waste any time. I'm, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizu and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Hee Chan, but I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. I'm saying it so you feel bad. <laughs> really? Hey, Jeff, if you're going to say that, you're saying that is definitely the truth, and there can't be any mistaking it. 
I know, I know. I guess I should have had my revenge for losing, at the very least. She even smiles in that mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? She just scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard it can it be to determine if the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall! It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Shi-chan. We think the library is open. You have no idea, do you? It's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No, thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. One flight of stairs up, and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Just a different painting in the background. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is, is that the library's whereabouts, whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the latter and choose my direction at random. After I turn the crowd around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though. Just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside, and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. Could be a monster inside gonna attack me. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. Oh, that just sounds terrible. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it was much easier to open than I anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head over even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. <coughs> oh, she's pretty. <coughs> This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room, and probably doing this. Yeah. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. See? I called it. Evidently, having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently pulls down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there, may I help you? Standing directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, hi. <laughs> Sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Uh, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and the saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind, like Kinji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Ah, yeah. I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of my action. I'm the least... Satao. Satao. Satu? I'll say Satao. Pleased to meet you. <clears throat> Isao. Isao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. I think she's fully blind. 
As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizun and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizun and me... I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I'm aware, Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? <clears throat> She's a sharp one, she is. That's right, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before settling down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, tea, cup, and saucer in hand. Is she, like, trying to hide the fact that she's laughing or something? Is that... okay. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Atao. It's really, it tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. You stink. What'd you do? Lily, please, there's no need to be so formal. <clears throat> she says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So, which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third-year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2 is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, specifically for both blind and partially blind students, which probably means Kinji's in there. I see. Ah, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pass. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My, my, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure, sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, may, many have come to terms with their conditions. She is way too formal. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I seek into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. <clears throat> class representative, huh? Compared to Shizu and her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizun's blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Well, I just dive right into it, don't I? Hmm, the more popular ones are the track and field club which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, those such as art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing to a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? I hated it when, uh, when my old elementary school like forced you to join clubs and you're just like, well, None of them really appeal to me. None of them interest me. I don't care. You're going to join a club and you're going to like it. <clears throat> I hated that. It isn't, though it is encouraged. They hold you at gunpoint. Oh, good. That's a relief. I really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold. Wow, the music just dropped out, too. I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. <clears throat> As I look out to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctively orange tint. Wait, when does school actually get let out? I mean, he's been playing Risk with the girls for probably hour or more, and then he's probably been here with Lily with for another hour, possibly. So we're looking about three or so hours, right? So when does their school actually get let out? Like, what, noon? 
noon, two, three o'clock. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of time. Sorry, Hiso. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concern. Ah, no, it's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizun when I had the chance, but Lily seems to likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. I, uh, I think I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me, which they seem to have a habit of doing. Just ask her! You got free help right here. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I, would I could introduce you. This just gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the, on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers. We slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we fall in. Men, always let the ladies go in first. Open the door for them. That is just common courtesy and uh, gentleman. Being a gentleman, that's what I'm saying. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. I love that smell, you know? Going to like an old library that's been there for generations and you're just like mm, paper <laughs> there don't seem to be a lot of students here considering the time it isn't a big surprise everyone's probably either in school grounds or the dorms you go are you here she says it to the thin air since the library doesn't seem to be present and of course lily can't see this what's unexpected is that it draws a reaction oh gosh something from under the counter thuds against it followed by a quiet wail Aww. The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. She was totally sleeping underneath the desk. She was taking a nap. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? How can I actually do my job? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Just admit you were taking a nap. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. I got run over by a car once, but I'm fine. Fine. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. People like to do that a lot. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, Lily, did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... In Mr. Celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Deer in headlights! Oh no! I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Hey, I'm right here. How you doing? Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me. Yuko, this is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hisao, right? Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I- Please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. I don't want to do my job. I want to just go to bed and sleep and play video games. I don't want responsibility. How's it any responsibility at all? I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. I will commit seppuku right in front of you. But... So there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work, at least partially. Azuko seems so not exactly relaxed, but at least looks slightly less tense. Well, I, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Uh, well, we got a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize and shelve all of them. She com seems completely okay with all this. It's so troublesome, and they waste so much. I wish I could quit this job. Okay, maybe I was wrong. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the owls then, if you don't mind. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna go over here. Bye. <laughs> Get out of this conversation now. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. 